This video is brought to you by Squarespace, so let's make snow globes and talk about that later. I haven't made a tutorial in a bit, which is not okay, so let's make a snow globe. I don't need to ask nobody. Full screen. Take an icosphere, bump up that icosphere. I'm just going to throw on a thickness or solidify modifier. Apply. Make a base. That's going to be a cylinder, a high-res cylinder, and do extremely advanced modeling techniques. By the way, if you bevel here, uh, fun fact, it's going to look good. Just make sure these line up, and that is our modeling. This is going to be a glass material. I do this by increasing the transmission, lowering the roughness, and boom. By the way, uh, if you have an HDRI or something like that under film, this transparent glass is going to matter. Well, let's make a material. I'm thinking wood. Is wood good? Let's try that. There is no wood texture. What am I doing? There is a wave texture. So view the wave texture. Set the bands to ring. So now, I mean, I don't know. We'll make it work. Increase the distortion. Increase the detail. Increase the detail scale. And we almost have something that barely resembles that wood. I'm going to take the factor. Yeah, and connect that to the height, which is going to be a normal map. So all of a sudden, we have a bit of texture here. Let's lower the distance so it's not as strong. Recently, I've been playing around with not changing changing the strength. A coworker said it was a good idea. Find some kind of wood-like color. Bump up the roughness because wood isn't that reflective. I think we take a uh, color ramp. So white becomes this, black becomes that. I'm just going to play with some settings until it looks more like wood. Well, they say always fix it, in po but we are in post. So let's fix it in double post. We need to change the color so it's not the same everywhere. Hopefully it will help. We take a noise texture. And this is just so some areas of the wood are darker or something. I don't even know. We just see what happens. Inspiration will strike. Bring up that roughness. Boom. Take the color. We want to change the color. So we mix the color, we take it, we multiply, and then all of a sudden we have a multiplier that will darken it in uh, certain sections. I think that actually almost looks passable. So passable that I won't be ashamed to save. Only other thing is we don't want our snow globe to be so perfect, as in like perfectly reflective and all this. So I'm going to add some... Uh surface, whatever. We all know the trick. It's literally the same thing. You take a, a noise texture, you increase the contrast. Literally any time you need like non-specific surface detail, you should just be using this. I'm going to make it the roughness. There we go. And of course, this is something that's going to end up being subtle. But as we bring this close to zero, you for sure cannot tell the difference. I'm going to bump the contrast. Uh, the idea is to just add surface imperfections. I mean, you know the drill. Not important, but I do want to make it shorter. Now, we all know the interesting part of this video is the physics. Like nobody gives a fuck about what I'm I'm doing right now. Uh, so do I want to model my own village? Well, I guess if we're going for like 10 minute photorealism, we're, we're going to use Sketchfab. What happens if we just type in snow globe and then download that <laughs> tutorial over? Wow, it's a lot of snow globes. Uh, get downloadable ones. Pro tip, if you see a dollar sign up here, uh, that means you have to pay for it. I like this Christmas hat. Okay, we're going to download the 3D model. CC attribution, author must be credited. Thank you, um, Shedman. <laughs> there, there's your credit. We're going to take the model, throw it in, say, okay, import the model, and we hope that it does not come with textures. We have albedo. We have ambient inclusion. We have normal. We have roughness. And we have an empty metallic map. Very useful. Roughness goes to roughness. By the way, if it's a black and white texture, kind of data, you always uh, make it non-color. Uh, normal. It does have color. Yet, for some reason, we also make it non-color. We want to specify this as a normal map. Connect that there. Albedo connect. And boom. That looks great. I think I can afford to m at least model some snow. Okay, take a plane, scale up the plane, divide, 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 divide. Maybe one more divide. And I'm just going to randomly pull things up. You can use a noise texture if you want. I'm uh, using proportional editing, by the way. There's a thing called random, and this will kind of create uh, surface details. Let's call it that. I'm going to put it just so it's popping over the wood. Duplicate the sphere. I'm going to hide the original. And all I want to do is take this and kind of cut away the things that are outside. Take the outer shell, delete it so that we only have the inner shell. So now it's not like two layers of glass. It's just a, a single one. Do we need to invert our normals? We do. Take all this, run a flip, and now we cut one away from the other. Okay, you know what? We're, we're going to do this properly. I want this uh, plane to have thickness so that it's actually going to work this time. So I'm going to take all this, extrude it down, and now we have a three-dimensional thing. Great. Okay. Okay. Now we're rolling. But that is Christmas, right? And before we keep spreading the Christmas spirit with snow globes, let me spread the website spirit with the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Legitimately, amazing service when it comes to making websites. You can design things by dragging around blocks or literally just inject HTML. Three things that just comes with the Squarespace platform is you get analytics, data for who's coming to your website. You get an asset library where you can store audio, video, pictures integrated in. And thirdly, if you're turning this into a subscription or a digital product thing, they offer payment system integrated in, accepts everything under the sun. And you can head over to Squarespace, design a website, and when you are ready to take it live,
Live. You can use my link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Snow globe time. So we need to run a physics simulation where really, if we have a bunch of snow falling, all it is is we take the sphere, we say spawn a bunch of points in here randomly, apply gravity so they fall. But the secret of getting a nice snow globe animation, like they're suspended and there's a liquid inside, I'm actually not sure how it works, but they fall super slowly. And we can simulate that by adding a lot of air resistance, right? Like imagine a piece of paper falling downwards. It doesn't just fall like a brick. It kind of sways one way and then the other way. I'm going to take this and the snow, control J to join them into one object. This is just so it can be a single collider. We could actually have these spawn anywhere. Like it doesn't have to be the full sphere since we'll like shake it anyhow. I'm going to take my plane, throw it inside of here so that it's within the bounds. This is what's going to spawn snow. You go to particle physics, you add the particles, boom. But I want them to all emit at once. Right now what's happening is they're emitting on frame one and then they keep going until frame 200, right? Whereas I want them to all come on the first frame, all 1000, and they should live for like 500 frames so that it's basically the whole scene. Um, as you can see, they're falling really, really fast. So if I go to physics, it's either drag or dampening. Let's see, I'll increase the drag. Nope, definitely not drag. What about dampening? Yep, dampening is the one. And let's make these particles super tiny so we can actually see uh, what's going on here. So here is our snow system. They're just going to pass right through Santa because it's not real. There's nothing to intersect. But if it were real, what we'd want to do is we'd want to take this and we'd want to turn it into a collider. So physics, collision, the particles stick on uh, to this. Whereas if I now drop it, they'll keep working. Okay, cool. Um, definitely a bit of friction with randomness, a bit of dampening with randomness. Actually, a lot of dampening. Like it doesn't like bounce or anything like that. I take the sphere. I do the same thing. This is going to be collision. Actually, no friction since it's so smooth. Let's say a bit of dampening and randomness. It goes, it goes, it goes. It catches. Amazing. And none of them are falling out. Let's see if I put this up here. Do they collide? Oh, they totally do. We need to animate this bad boy, like stir it up because uh, that's how you actually get the snowflakes to do what they do. Uh, but luckily for us, we could do a dumb animation, right? So I'm just going to take a empty and I'm going to take everything else and parent it to that empty. So you can see in this hierarchy, the empty uh, is the master of all. Um, one other thing that's obviously missing is all the snowflakes are kind of falling together, especially because of the drag. What do I want to do? I'm going to use the physics system and add turbulence. Turbulence, if I can find it, basically means noise, right? The more turbulence we have, the less consistent it's going to look. So let's bring up our strength to 100. And yeah, now you can see it's really doing it. Add some noise, because of course I want this to be very random. As we increase the size, I believe we get less fine detail. But if I make it tiny, yeah, we want there to be a lot of fine detail with this so that not uh, nearby particles don't necessarily fall together. So now let me just give this like a passable animation one second. Actually, what am I thinking? Was I about to do the work myself? No, procedural. Uh, for the empty, add a uh, keyframe by hitting I, which will make it so that when you go into the graph editor, we have all this. All we care about is changing these values, the X location, the Z rotation, whatever. So for example, the Y location, this direction, modifier, add noise. Now it's shaking back and forth. Increase the size of this so it's a lower frequency. Increase the depth so it kind of, here you can see the graph. So it looks uh, more detailed, right? So this is without, this is with. And when we're happy with this, you copy the modifier. Go to something like the, I don't know, the Z rotation, paste it. Uh, but right now these are going to be perfectly in sync because we made the same modifier. Uh, so just make sure to offset it so that they're not uh, exactly in the same position. X rotation, paste it, make sure to offset it. Uh, maybe this one can be even stronger. So give it 50% of a boost. One thing I'm seeing is once it collides, it kind of slides like water, which makes sense. We didn't change anything, but it is weird behavior. I'm going to add much more friction and much more dampening and make sure to do that for both objects. That's a simple fix. There's a few settings we can change to really enhance the, maybe the look, but also the stability. So people don't really talk about this. If you go to integration, which isn't obvious what it means, what this is basically saying saying is when I run my physics simulation, to what quality should it be? Because behind the hood, there's a lot of calculus and literally um, an approximation of an integral. But all you need to know is that there's different integration methods. And as you go down the line, they get more accurate. So RK4, most accurate, midpoint, totally suitable, Euler, uh, shit. Uh, but I'm going to do midpoint and I am going to add, I guess, subframes. So now uh, for every step, we get an extra calculation just in case so nothing clips through anything else. I think I want this one to be really strong, I think, because this is what's going to let us like turn over the thing. So let's see. Yeah, now it can really kind of rotate upside down and all of this. I want to take the particles. I want to say, oh, add five times more. We are actually going to pre-calculate and cache so we can see uh, what is happening. So all you have to do is specify your frame range. I'm saying simulate between frames one and 250. Click bake and it's actually pretty quick. And oh yeah, that's looking nice. I think the only thing that makes it look a little less like a snow globe is it's falling actually quite quick. 
and the turbulence is a little, like, there's too many clusters instead of this uh, randomness. So easy fix, go into the turbulence settings, I want to say, I want to say, take the scale down, which I think adds noise. I'm not really sure. Always want to hear that in a tutorial. He doesn't know. By the way, you can't change anything, I guess, until you delete the bake, because otherwise, how could you change information that is there? I assume you can push it above one, so let's add 40%. Did that do anything? I don't know if it did. Well, I guess equivalently, what we can do is we can take the time step and lower it. So whereas subframes adds calculations, the time step literally speeds up or slows down the uh, simulation. So as this number gets uh, tinier and tinier, it's going to look like it's in slow motion, because every frame you're only moving up 0.01. Instead of 0.04, let's do 0.025. And now that I'm thinking about it, Brownian might be something worth investigating. What Brownian is, is it says how much do particles naturally diffuse away from each other, almost like a smoke. And this is almost exactly what I've been saying, right? I want them to separate. So when I increase the Brownian a lot, just for illustration, you're going to see it really kind of just does some weird shit, right? But let me just give it a bit of an advantage. For this plane, I'm going to extrude it into a uh, cube. And the reason I'm doing this is so now they're not all starting at the exact same plane, planar height. And let's bump this up yet again. 15,000 particles. Your boy doesn't care. Um, and additionally, for the render settings, I want to randomize the scale, which I guess is only going to be observable if each particle inherits a uh, object. So what we do is we make an icosphere, a very low resolution one, by the way, and we say, so I'm going to call this one particle, and it can exist outside of our empty and all this. What I want to say is for the particle system on every single point, instance or spawn, but really instance the uh, snowflake object. So it is called particle. They're looking a bit thick, so we can fix that by either changing the size of the uh, settings or literally scale down the uh, mesh. Additionally, I don't want to see the box when I'm rendering or viewing. So I'm going to hide the emitter, and I'm going to hide the emitter. And here's what I was saying. We can randomize the uh, scale so they're not all um, identically sized. Okay, so I've been waiting patiently. I'm excited to see what this looks like. And then regardless, we're going to get the render settings correct, because you can play around with physics settings until the cows do whatever cows do. Let's select the particle. It's very hard to see what's going on if you're not in uh, cycles. Um, but that's looking nice, although they're really hard to see. But they are there. They are there. This is probably the best way to view it. So that's looking pretty okay. The only other thing I'd change is maybe add even more drag. I mean, I don't know. If you want to do that and we couldn't uh, bump up the setting, by the way, the the way to do it is in force field, there's literally a drag setting and you can add uh, both uh, linear and quadratic, which I do not know the math of, admittedly. There really isn't much to change for the material of the uh, particle. Uh, the particle of which is being instanced everywhere, it kind of already looks like snow. Uh, but if you want to bump it a tiny bit further, you take the uh, snow particle, you make a material, and really all you want to do is add a bit of transmission. I don't know if it's physically accurate, but it looks nice. As for rendering, I mean, honestly, I think we're like there. Uh, you throw in an ambient occlusion pass, like it's over. It's going to look good. So I'm going to pick a frame I like, like maybe, I don't know, this one. Pick an angle that has, I don't know, a good vibe. This kind of has a good vibe as it were. And the rest is really compositing. So let's get this thing rendering. It's glass, so we want more samples, denoise, whatever. Hit render. I don't really have like a scene, like a table or anything that this exists on. So I'm just going to kind of do it on the fly like the rest of this tutorial. I want to put this over a background. So alpha over lets me take this image and put it over while keeping the alpha channel uh, some color. I'm going to go for kind of like a bluish green Christmassy color, make it way darker and way less saturated. Okay, let's stick with this. So I'm going to add a bit of exposure. Let's take the gamma, which isn't contrast, but I'm going to think of it that way. As I increase this, that's the opposite vibe. I want this to be yuck. I want this to be a bit lower. And that's going to make it, I don't know, it just brightens it up and makes it a little less dreary. Let's do the classic uh, lens distortion everybody does. So I like 0.01 on both. It's going to curve the image a little and add just a tiny bit of chromatic aberration. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's there. Other boring tricks, you can throw in a bit of glow or glare, uh, which will admittedly give it a lot of visual interest. So I'm going to set this to bloom. And because I'm not a monster, I'm going to bring up the threshold. So less, uh, it takes more for something to be bright enough to emit light or a glare. And then for the mix, you bring it uh, close to negative one. The reason for this is negative one is no glare. One is only glare. So when you go to like negative 0.9, you have uh, just a tiny bit of glare. Other tricks, other tricks. I love ambient occlusion. I was just talking about this. So in the view layer, enable ambient occlusion. I don't care about any other pass. I just love it so. 
And what ambient occlusion looks like is essentially that. So you take the image, this might be a bit tricky with the alpha, but let's see. I uh, take the image, we're then going to overlay the ambient occlusion. So one after another, you take this, you set it to multiply. So let's see, this is before and after, a little hard to tell, but let's zoom in before, or sorry, before, after, just kind of darkens parts of it, gives it a bit more dimensionality. If we have a camera, then so too can we have depth of field. So in my camera settings, by the way, I have a add-on I made called camera tab that puts it here instead of here. I prefer it. Either way, you enable depth of field. You say, what do I want to focus on? Well, actually the empty is perfect because it moves with our object. It is the motion of our object and you bring down the aperture to non-realistic levels. So as you get really tiny, it's just whack, but even a lot of whack can make a good snack render. Um, other than that, you always want to throw a slight blur onto your renders. The reason for this is like infinitely sharp images, not very realistic. So even a pixel blur of like two uh, will help. And then final, final thing I swear is the quality of the glass is something we can change. It has an outer shell and an inner shell. So if I take that inner shell, okay, follow me here. I take it and I scale it up or down effectively what's happening is I change the uh, thickness of the glass. So you can use that for or not for your advantage. So this is before, this is after. This is just if you want to um, make the glass look a little less thick, because I guess it would be pretty thin in reality. Oh yeah, and for some reason I didn't notice that the uh, material kind of broke. No worries, no worries. That might have been something you're like screaming at, like the snow, the fucking snow, look at it. Uh, but I didn't see it. Click L to select all the linked things in this island that is the snow. For that, I'm going to make a material. I'm going to assign it so that anything I make here uh, will affect only uh, that section. And yeah, yeah, that is what was missing. <laughs> there, were, there was no snow. And there you go. That is your tutorial. You can get files on Patreon. You can, you can do whatever you want. I'm, for, for example, I'm going to leave. That is one thing I can do. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something.